Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Slam Up Wrestling. Myself, Supreet, and this is your Summer Slam review for 2021. I'm joined by Spandan here. So, Spandan, what do you think about Summer Slam? Or like I like to, you know, call it Summer Scam, the lamest <laughs> party of the summer. Okay. So, first of all, uh, a welcome for me to Slam Up Wrestling again, doing pay-per-view reviews. So, yeah, I, I mean, the all the hype was around how will WWE counter CM Punk's debut on AEW. So all the hype was around that, and they didn't need to do that. They the SummerSlam hype was not bad. It was good enough to you know have a good show. There were a couple of lows, very disappointing lows to be honest. But I think the highs were more than the lows, which is why most of the ratings you see for SummerSlam are seven point five. Eight, eight point five, like that. So there were a lot, not a lot of lows, but yeah, good moments, bad moments. So let's talk about it because decent is show. Like we would rate it in the end, but yeah, gradually it did get better. The last four matches saved it. So yeah, let's talk about it. And why was this show four hours? Like, did this show need to to be you know four hours? Like, if I cut two three segments, it could have you know save at least a hour. You could have given a simple yeah. three-hour establishment. Stupid segments like that. Uh, Pure Water was a sponsor, the water sponsor for SummerSlam, the water bottle sponsor. They had an entire segment where Miz comes out, Morrison comes out, and Woods and all of that happens. They have backstage segments. So, so many stupid segments. You had Nakamura and Rick Boogs in an entrance. Why? They didn't even stay for commentary. Like so many stupid things. And we were like, like everybody. I don't know one person who was expecting Alexa Bliss was with Eva Marie to be on the main show. Everyone was expecting that it would be the kickoff match, and people didn't know what the second kickoff would be because none of the either either of the matches weren't going to the kickoff show. All had good hype. So ten matches on a main card, you could have made it night one, night two like WrestleMania. People would have enjoyed it so much, but they made their choices. So yeah. It didn't have to be four hours eight minutes, but it it got tiring to be honest. And again, this might be a move by Vince McMahon to you know not give NXT any viewers. We'll tire everyone with the SummerSlam and not have anyone for Takeover tomorrow because extremely tiring. But yeah, happy with some of the results. So let's talk about it. Yes, very long. Uh, to be honest. So we'll be talking about the entire card, you know. But before that, if we are new. To slam up wrestling, then make sure to like, share, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and check out our other content. We did review for Dynamite. We did a big review for Rampage, the return of CM Punk, the Tide in professional wrestling has changed. So check that out. We'll be doing review for Takeover 35 or 36. What's what's 36, the number? 36. It's 36. So we'll be covering that as well. Who's but, watching NXT? Yeah. Even, even you quit watching NXT. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Anyways. It felt like a task at the end. Anyways, but uh, before we talk about the main card, I forgot that there was one match for the kickoff show. And you recommended yeah. me to don't watch it. So I didn't watch it. Yeah. Yeah, smart. Because it uh, didn't have any reason to be there. It uh, wasn't really. It was just that. It was a kickoff show. They needed to have one match so that the crowd who's entering are already seated. They watch something. Plus, Big E is a fan favorite. People are interested in the Baron Corbin storyline. So that's why. But it doesn't have any repercussions. And they randomly gave the briefcase back to Big E. So nothing happening there. So not much to talk about. So uh, was it a good match, enjoyable match, or a forgettable match? Decent match. It didn't go on for too long. It was basically... Biggie is the fan favorite. Corbin is bad. Corbin is poor. So Biggie wins the match and he takes back his briefcase, which Corbin had stolen. So that's the basic storyline. Nothing great. There you go. But shall we uh, start with the main card? Yes, let's do it. So they opened up with the Raw tag title match. It was the uh, tag team champions, AJ Styles and Omo. So they were Defending against RK Bro, that's Randy Orton and uh, Matt Riddle. And by the way, I liked the setup of the you know stadium. It looked very simple. I didn't and I didn't expect them to do a you know layout of a Royal Rumble type. I didn't know if this was a baseball stadium. 
Yeah, I, I, to be honest, I didn't like the stage actually because this rumble stage, it's, it was like the ramp is parallel to the ring. It goes like this and it takes a left turn. It's a very bad setup. You didn't have pyro. You could have set up at least pyro for some superstars like rumble 2020. You had pyro only for edge. But if edge didn't have that pyro, it would have ruined the moment. So you could have had pyro. Who all needed the pyro? AJ can exist without pyro. He has in the past. Edge needs a pyro. And uh, Roman Reigns needs a pyro. That's it. You don't need pyro for anyone else. You, you got gas pyro. Some... Yeah, that, you know, ruined some of the moments. Because the hype around Roman Reigns and John Cena, will talk about that. Because both superstars entering, uh, Cena new t-shirt, Roman Reigns with a pyro. And smoke coming out when Reigns holds the title up. Like, poof. You wanted so, pyro? Like this stage. Yeah, obviously. Everyone did. <laughs> I think so, I think with the baseball stadiums you can't give us a customized setup. Maybe you yeah. could have given us something like uh, if did you see the setup for the old WrestleMania, for example, WrestleMania 17? Yeah, they had pyro behind the ring and all of that, right? No, I'm talking about the setup because that was that was also similar to a baseball stadium, like a crisscross okay. type of entrance. So you could have given us a set, but they decided you know just Give us some melody screens and you have the layout and that's it. Yeah, nothing great in the stage, but yeah, good uh, way to start the pay-per-view because they knew all the result was predictable, but they wanted a pop to begin. They wanted people to be happy in the start. So yeah, let's talk about it. So uh, I want to say the build for the match was interesting because this RK Bros thing is the only digestible thing on a Monday Night Raw. And even the match was fun, you could say. Almost didn't do yeah. shit here. <laughs> so, your statement from the MITB review where AJ did the work, most of the work, it's applicable here more. Because see, see, you're na- didn't... Now, now you're realizing it. Yeah, because in that match, at least almost had some time in the ring. In this one, he didn't. So, this was not going to be a very good match, classic match. Obviously, almost is there in the other three are in-ring ma- magicians, Riddle, Orton and Styles. So, great match. And yeah, the build-up was really, really good because it was something out of the box. It was not like they made a team and they're going ahead with it. They still not signed the contract, but now they're tag team champions. So, all of that is happening. But, you know, people just uh, underestimate WWE a bit. When uh, Randy hit the RKO to Riddle, everyone was like, okay, the storyline is ruined. WWE ruined everything, buried and all of that. But you see they've built a so everything doesn't have to be happy happy or sad sad it can be happy sad it can go up and down so you are cute but now they're a team and very happy that riddle has a second main roster championship and yeah like i said you know fun little match here almost was he had you know some big guy moments he was basically dominating matt riddle in some parts mm-hmm. of the match you know uh randy orton actually got a hot tag and there this was actually yeah, really hot tag and this was basically the finish of the match in just the other 5-10 minutes, the match was done. So, uh, Ran- uh, Randy actually hit an RK on AJ Styles. And that was pretty much it. You got new Raw Tag Team Champions. Uh, yeah, they are going to have a decent enough, you know, title run, whatever they want to do in that tag division. But main question is, what happens with AJ Styles and Omos? Exactly. So, first point, I am happy that RK Bro is Tag Team Champions. Let's see what happens on Raw. They're a good thing that's happening on Raw, perhaps the only one. So with the titles, they can do even more. Let's see what happens. So talking about AJ and Omos, next month is Extreme Rules. So I am hoping, I am hoping that AJ goes back to being a singles wrestler. Almost, it doesn't have to be a tag team. They can be like, what was Omos doing in the early three to four months? He was a colossus for AJ Styles, right? AJ started his feud with McIntyre alongside Omos. So because this current scenario with Bobby Lashley, there is going to be a rematch from the today's SummerSlam at Saudi. That's sure. But next month is not Saudi. And I'm very expecting that next month's Extreme Rules is going to be a very bad pay-per-view. Because both, both of the title matches have been set up like this at SummerSlam that you know the title matches will take place at Saudi. So I, I compare it to Hell in a Cell 2019. Because they had the Fox Smackdown premiere at that time. They didn't focus at Hell in a Cell at all. They just randomly put together matches. It's going to be like that, Extreme Rules. 
So I want a Bobby Lashley AJ Styles singles match for the WWE Championship, and I think the rate at which AJ is going, he's got six to seven years, maybe five to six years, I would say, in the back, and I think two to three more world title things are deserving for him. At least one is enough at this point. Yeah, at least one. Yeah, we're talking about at least then yeah one because he's already Grand Slam champion. Maybe the Universal title, but Prince I hope doesn't lose for the next ten years. Yeah, we we do want uh, a singles run from AJ. You keep almost uh, the pairing, you know, tight. The thing that I don't want is them breaking up the pairing and almost going on a singles run because that's the something that nobody wants to see. It's horrifying. You do not want almost to be in a singles run. He's decent enough. He can talk, but he cannot talk talk like properly. So he you want AJ to be there with him. Maybe see you can build a character. It's so easy. We are talking right now, and I can think of an idea. AJ Styles could be the superstar who only fights in his title matches and main pay per view matches. Weekly also he can wrestle, but when it's confrontations, almost takes care of everything. Almost smashes his opponent and all of that. You can do everything. AJ as a single super. Any any scenario, you put AJ Styles, he'll do good. So hopefully he has another singles run in the future. I hope it's just now. Have another uh, decent, uh, you know, tornado tag team match at Extreme Rules because you have one stipulations at that pay per view. Have that match and then move on. Speaking about tornado, after seeing the next match, I wish I was in a tornado. I'm talking about Eva Murray versus Alexa Bliss. I wish Man. I was in. Uh, what is yeah, your first take when you see Eva versus Alexa being booked in a SummerSlam card? Not happy for Alexa Bliss. Extremely happy that Eva Marie is being booked like this. Just make her lose. Just make her lose everything. She's terrible in the ring. Terrible beyond terrible. Like bad beyond bad. I can't think of enough words because what has she trained for? You should have put her in a manager position. Like. She can speak, obviously, but today did you see in the early parts of the match? Hopefully, you didn't watch the match. But in the early parts of the I match, I had to. Uh, I had to, man. Okay, yeah, for this, Alexa did a drag down and Eva Marie fell down, and we were on the stream. We were saying at least she fell down by Alexa Bliss, not like oh, this. <laughs> so something good happened. So yeah, I don't want to talk about the match. Nothing great. No one is getting momentum from it. Alexa Bliss got a pop because people love her. So I'm hoping that uh, next month, uh, Extreme Rules again talking about it is in Columbus, Ohio, hometown for Alexa Bliss. Give us Charlotte versus Alexa Bliss, so it would be amazing. Sorry for the spoiler. So not uh, talking about this. I don't find anything interesting. Let's just move on to the next match because it's a great one. Yeah, uh, but yeah, this match completely sucked, and Eva Marie was completely off. And crowd was not into it, man. Like they, we even heard we want wired chants from the Vegas crowd, and yeah, um, and there was one thing with uh, Piper even not actually helping uh, Eva Maria. So they have already teased the breakup here, and like the Ooh. breakup is official. I'm talking about Ooh. Piper Niven. Who? <laughs> Piper Niven. I will not name that. Drop uh, name that they are given. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So they're teasing that breakup between Eva Marie and Dutra. What do both people do? Go to main event. Bravo. Go to main event. Enjoy your matches. Beat the number one contender of the NXT Women's Championship. Like NXT is nothing. Do all of that stuff. So not interested at all. What Eva Marie is doing. She's like Eva Marie. Like. Do something good. The vignettes were interesting, but what it led to was absolute stupidity. So let's see where it goes. But right now, you do not have anyone invested in it. Alexa. So Alexa wins this match. A Piper Niven and Eva Marie are going their separate paths, I think. And there you go. So let's move on quickly. We had Damien Priest versus Sheamus for the United States Championship match. I thought. Uh, as of now, you know, we've seen three to four matches at this point. This was kind of a good match, uh, but it kind of took them a while to, you know, pick up the momentum, you know, give us that, oh, uh, yeah, get the crowd invested in. But decent enough match, uh, according to me, what you think about it? 
crowd got really into it uh, towards the last, uh, you know, half of the match, second half of the match. They love Sheamus, they love Damien Priest. So, it was great to see a great match because it was a championship contenders match on Raw. That match was also good. Now, the title match. So, the result was great. Really happy with the result. And we needed this because if you would have had Jinder versus McIntyre or some other bullshit after this match, after Eva versus Alexa, then the crowd would have gone nuts. They needed something good. And when they heard it's the US title match, they knew it's going to be a hard hitting contest. And there, there was a highlight where, uh, you know, Damien Priest did his, you know, middle rope moonsault to the outside and he landed right on his spine. I don't know if he sold it uh, throughout the match or if he was actually hurt, but it looked like he was hurt. He landed right on his spine. So, sold it nicely. Sheamus was great in the match. He lost his face shield uh, towards the end. Got hit with the reckoning. Awesome match. Awesome result. Yeah, Damien Priest. Really, really happy that he's getting this a similar kind of treatment to Riddle because Riddle won the US title first, now tag team champion. So, Damien Priest, it's, don't you feel good that US title is kind of a stepping stone now? It is getting some relevance. Riddle was the first one, now Damien Priest. I'm happy to see that. Yeah, happy to see Damien Priest as champion, but we need, also need a good reign as well. Like, how good was Sheamus' US title? Terrible. Like, I love Sheamus, but you use Angel Gaza, Drew Gulak, and all these superstars. Not like this, Umberto. So, not a very good reign from Sheamus, but he uh, had his banger matches in 2021 early and 2020 late. So, I want that Sheamus to come back. I want Sheamus to get into a feud <clears throat> with Drew McIntyre very, very soon. That is still there. Because Sheamus and McIntyre, when it happened early this year, Sheamus, if you watch uh, the WWE Chronicle uh, of Sheamus on Fastlane, after the match, he lost to McIntyre. He went to Cesaro and cried his heart out. He sobbed on she- uh, Cesaro's chest. So, I was so emotional watching one of my favorite Sheamus because the disappointment was not that he lost all three matches to McIntyre. The disappointment was he wanted this match to be the WWE Championship match at Mania. So, uh, I want them to have that proper, proper feud uh, leading to WrestleMania 38 because Sheamus has not had his big moment. He won the world title once at Mania, but 18 seconds. So he needs his big moment. So let's see what the future is for Sheamus. Uh, one rematch is obviously coming. Are you you are talking about this here with the United States Championship match? Yeah, I think it's going to be extreme rules, but never trust WWE. They can even do it uh, two days tomorrow, tomorrow the day after on Raw. You could do a lot with the US title picture, man. Like, you have so many people sitting in the catering. Why don't feature them on TV and give them a title, uh, title show? I think I, I think I trust WWE right now because they will. They're giving someone, a young guy like Damien Priest, a title run. Garza, Drew Gulak, Akira Tozawa, Reginald is so talented. All these superstars can get the US title matches. Really, really happy that they are. But, yeah... Uh, moving on to the next match, it was for the SmackDown Attack Team title match. It was the Mysterios versus the Usos. It's kind of a rematch from Money in the Bank. They are doing a lot of rematches on SmackDown. That was the entire build for the pay-per-view. But I like this match. This was kind of way better than the US title match that we saw here. So, and also, they also had a really good match at the Money in the Bank pay-per-view as well. So, really good chemistry between these two teams. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Uso's like legit my favorite tag team on the main roster. We've talked GYB a lot of times. So, Uso's and Mysterio's, I, you know, so much chemistry between them. Dominic just needs a character right now because he needs a good character. He's good in the ring. I have no problem in that. That part of the problem is sorted. But... I'm cringing right now because in backstage, I'm tired of the, you know, son, I wanted to do it for you. You know, son, do this. You know, son, do that. It's getting cringy to watch because, yeah, we know your father, son. You've already been tag team champions. He's grown up. Listen to Roman Reigns' word. Acknowledge that. He's grown up. So, you need to see that fact. Always teaching him like he's 16 years old is not going to help. But the match... Really, really good match. Usos never have a bad match, I think. 
so they have a great tag team match uh, the result was very good they didn't have to have a title change the bloodline stays strong so yeah happy with the match happy with the result let's see where it goes because wwe is slowly building a tag team on smackdown alpha academy they put in the work to alpha academy i think they are going to be the next challengers so in this match we see some good near falls like uh, mysterio actually kicked out of the uso splash we had uh, who was that dominic actually hitting three amigos shout out to his real dad uh, eddie guerrero as in peace so uh, we also had usos they were kind of i don't know uh, taunting eddie guerrero with the three amigos i don't know what's going on there but they were you know uh, doing some great heel work here so there was yet another spot where the mysterios were about to win they hit a 619 uh, i'm talking about red and he was going for the splash here but uh, i think it was jimmy he got the knees up and there was uh, from there it was downfall you know kind of a downfall for the mysterios the usos who end up you know getting the victory a really fun match and the main story is they are kind of teasing a mysterio dissension like Dominic is going to, you know, go on a separate path. So what do you think about that? Because you started this conversation with, you know, maybe Dominic needs a character. Like uh, he's not that good on the mic, he's doing good or well uh, as an in-ring character, but nothing much. Yeah, I think they've not teased it a lot, but it's eventually going to happen, we all know. So I think Dominic should be the one to attack his father, not the opposite. you know i think it's obvious that dominic will be the one turning heel because he needs a character you you can't have heel ray mysterio you just can't nobody hates ray mysterio so uh, let's see where this goes but yeah dominic soon needs a new character one year in the wwe congratulations to him he's done really really well so, so and time has just flew away because it feels like summer slam 2020 was yesterday and he was facing such problems so yeah let's see what happens but whenever it does I think it's going to be a great match. Ray and Dominic, oh my God, it's going to be insane in the ring. It just needs some good character work. And uh, that's, I think it will take time for the dissension. Let's see where this storyline goes. They still have that match to do with the Street Profits. They've not faced them yet. But it is at the expense of breaking yet another tag team. So, typical WWE here. Yeah, SmackDown has a good tag team division. They don't need to worry about this. Raw has less tag teams, so breaking up AJ and Omos, breaking up Miz and Morrison, breaking up everyone is not going to work. And by the way, they were kind of doing some interview segments throughout the night with uh, celebrities, mind you. Like yeah, one, four hours eight minutes, but but uh, the one interview I want to you know talk about is this one with Mario Lopez. I kind of liked his vibe, you know. It was actually sounding like a good commentator. I would say that he's better than the actual hired uh, uh, announcers that they have or interview guys or girls that they have hired in WWE. He was way better than all of them. And someone was telling me that he was kind of high. Oh, so yeah, because the ring announcers, not the ring announcers, the backstage inter- interviewers, they've lost Charlie Caruso, Rene Young and all these people. So Tom Phillips is gone. Byron Saxton is on commentary. So the only big name is Kayla Braxton who's left. Mackenzie Mitchell is just joining in. Kevin Patrick, the guy, is just joining in. They've trusted Kevin Patrick a lot. He joins the kickoff show every single time. So let's see where this goes. But yeah, he was Mario Lopez had a good vibe to him. Uh, he had RK Bro to interview. The vibe got even better. So yeah, good segment. But uh, I think they had a lot of segments. so you could have reduced it a bit maybe made it a three and a half hour show because i think 38 to 40 minutes was just interviews and do you remember the other uh, one of this uh, interviews this was one with uh, damian priest and she called damian priest the national champion not the us champion yeah, because they are in us right no she said the national champion of wwe oh wow <laughs> national champion of wwe mm. like, <clears throat> nothing okay. much here Maybe. but uh, yeah but let's talk about uh, which i thought was going to be the match of the night bianca belair versus sasha banks uh, hear me out we thought there were some rumblings that this match was not going to happen regarding both women's statuses then it was out that bianca is okay 
then the news came out that sasha banks may not show up and before the show went uh, came on air it was kind of reported that sasha banks is out of summer slam no reason injury covid nothing revealed as of now but they didn't i if they listen me if sasha banks couldn't make the show so why announce it you should have cancelled it am i right yeah you exactly should, you should have ca- cancel the match like why are what are you hyping up to here exactly why did you have the damn promo package when you know sasha banks is not going to come why have you had the contract signing why have you had all the segments because the rumors of sasha not being there have been since 3 weeks so wwe knew that she was not going to be at summer slam why do all these segments just book carmela versus bianca belair maybe a feud would have made us interested a triple threat would have made us interested then you could have had becky come in and uh, have that fatal four way and then win the title or do something this was a stupid and disappointed that sasha was not there because we were excited for the part 2 of this match but let's just see because what happened after uh, you know uh, carmela came out and all of that it was a boom high and then a push low so because a lot because imagine if you are you bought a ticket just to buy sasha banks and they announced that sasha banks is not available then how pushed off would you be i would be really really pissed but yeah, yeah you could say that they kind of clickbaited us like we saw the package here bianca belair actually made her entrance and immediately it was greg hamilton uh, greg ha- hamilton he said that sasha banks would not be you know making no uh, i think she was not available or you know be part of this match something like that so they have found some sort of a replacement at carmela and i'm like this whole august we have seen five to six carmela matches on every smackdown why are we getting here like can't we just cancel this match already like you did at money in the bank but then then what happened i think we were about to get this match i said fuck it and all of a sudden <laughs> we hear here becky lynch coming out she actually got a huge pop and the crowd and think this was the loudest i heard the, this crowd here in vegas for becky lynch by the way the crowd is singing the becky lynch theme everyone everyone is going wild really good moment at this point and then <laughs> she beats out carmela and Wait. she's she is taken up the equation and becky i want to say something yeah go on so becky when she returned i think we don't give enough credit to michael cole if you go back and watch that return on sony live my god michael cole and pat mcafee are a gold combination i thought cory graves and cole were great but pat mcafee just raises the game cole is the voice of wwe the way he shouted that becky one of the biggest stars on the planet she's not even the biggest star on the planet and he says that so great stuff but yeah let's talk about the bullshit that happened after that so carmela is taken up the equation here she goes face to face with bianca and she takes the mic i'm talking about becky lynch and says that uh, how about we have a match for the smackdown women's championship and you know tear the house down so crowd is chanting yes i was oh, praying that bianca says no but she said yes and i said you fucked up so we get the match man handle slam i don't didn't even know you call it the man handle slam man slam no i think the micro micro call calls it the man handle slam oh nice rock bottom 2.2 one two three that's it we got new smackdown women's champion becky lynch is already uh, a champion after returning but at the expense of Purring Bianca Belair. So good job there. Your last six to five month experiment with Bianca Belair has it, it has worked. Yeah, Slam of Wrestling. If you want to edit this part out, this is the rant for the video. WWE, you booked the EST of NXT in a five month gap, winning the Royal Rumble in her first year in WWE. having a killer match with sasha banks at wrestlemania the damn main event on night 1 having a great feud with bailey having that awesome match at hell in a cell and all of that stuff and then 
you beat her in 27 seconds. A person who vacated the raw women's championship due to pregnancy came back, demanded and won the SmackDown women's championship. The logic has already died. We're not even talking about the logic. But someone you've built, a homegrown star, Bianca Belair, is just buried in one night. I don't like to use that word a lot, but I have to today. What do you see Bianca Belair now? When she shows up on SmackDown, what will the fans expect? It's like, oh, she lost in 27 seconds to Becky Lynch from a single slam. And she's been in a Hell in a Cell match to defeat Bailey. What the hell are you talking about? And by the way, did you uh, notice that Bianca didn't even give a shit? She said, oh, okay, okay. Then, I lost. Exactly. Fine. When, when Becky came out, she was all popping and all of that stuff. And when she lost, what is this? You don't even have a character. You're not even, you lost the championship, madam. You lost the championship you won in the main event of WrestleMania. Are you not pissed off? You're happy that Becky Lynch came back and took your title. Like, what kind of acting is this? Learn from Eva Marie. I don't know, man. Was this the counter programming that they wanted to do? Dude, what do you expect now? Like, when you tune into SmackDown, you're excited. I hope Becky Lynch is bored, to be honest. But I mean, if she, you know, when Bianca shows up, even if she demands a rematch, I, people will obviously cheer her because she's a face character. People love her. But I won't see the star I saw in her for the past six months now. Because she just lost basically in 27 seconds. I, I wouldn't want someone like a Bianca Miller to be destroyed like that. I don't know where they pick up from now. Maybe she could at go least, to at least, could have, at least you could have given a 10-minute match. Five minutes would have worked, man. Anything. Like... Just Bianca losing by a roll-up would have worked, but for 5-6 minutes then, not like 27 seconds, I don't see her saying on SmackDown. I, I, the obvious move I see is her going to Raw, because the Raw women's division is sucking right now. So, they, I thought Becky was going to Raw and Seth was moving to Raw so that the husband wife stay together. But they're not, so Bianca needs to go to Raw because star power is required on Raw, but what kind of a star? The one who lost in 27 seconds? At, at least I could have put Becky in the Raw Women's Championship match. I would have taken that. That was already a triple threat. You would have reduced star power from Charlotte there, which you wanted because she was going to win. Or, 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 or. If, you, if Charlotte has won the match, you could have done a post-match angle and you know, do a face-to-face with Charlotte. That that was enough. Yeah, exactly. You, you see, there were rumors that Becky was going to come. There were rumors that she's going to appear in the Raw Women's title picture, but she came out on the smack. See, exactly. Launching. You lost the Raw, you vacated the Raw Women's Championship. Why are you asking for the SmackDown Women's Championship? What is your sense? So, very stupid booking. I don't see where this is going. But Bianca, please go to Raw. You need a fresh start immediately. You can't stay on SmackDown. She's basically feuded with everyone on SmackDown. See, now Becky Lynch is the uh, champion. Bianca could have one match at Extreme Rules. Tony Storm is there on SmackDown. Sasha will obviously be there because she's not, we've not got any rumors of her being injured or anything. You have new stars being built on SmackDown. Have those new matches. I'm not happy with Bianca's result today. Absolutely not happy. Bro, I don't know, man. She's buried. And this this was obviously counter-programming, man. Even they didn't know what they were doing. Too quick. I think the, uh, the rumors were that the Becky return was late. It was not planned. It was a last-minute decision. There Great last-minute decision. There you go. Like, you go, you got your hype, but you killed your own talent at the expense. Don't know, man. Don't know where you go from here. But yeah, Becky is SmackDown Women's Champion. Four times now. I think they announced it five over already. I don't know. One time Raw Women's Champion and four SmackDown Women's titles. Yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know. From here, the vibe of the show completely died for me. I'm like, when will this show end? And we yeah, have to go through. After this match, when this moment happened, I was just waiting for Reigns and Cena. I didn't want to see anything else. I just wanted to hear Roman Reigns' theme song and I would have been happy because they absolutely killed the vibe after this match. You had an incredible match before this. 
you had the usos and mysterios amazing things happening why ruin it like that then uh, i see drew mcintyre versus jinder mahal i'm like oh my god i have to go through this the crowd is completely died by the way it's n- it's not just both of us the cra- 50000 people in the stadium completely died after you know becky lynch showed up got a huge reaction and then the you could say the whole thing happened with bianca so even they know what's going on here but we get Mac- mcintyre versus mahal nobody cared for this match they were completely beating the shit out of each other and short little match here you know mahals uh, you could say lackeys are not available here as they are banned from ring side short little match mcintyre did quick work of mahal claymore and that's it Ma- mcintyre won the match and i don't know if you are doing a rematch or not for this feud do you think so obviously they are obviously they are like what what was the feud basically who can smash each other with most chair shots why are you not acknowledging the basic fact what should be the storyline if a blind person can see both people were jobbers both made their comebacks both became wwe champions your most important title why are you not talking about that it is stupid why are you not talking about the basic fact that you had similar journeys see on the bump once on the bump jinder mahal mentioned he wasn't celebrated as wwe champion as much as drew mcintyre that could be your base of the story that could be the base of the story that jinder mahal wants more recognition than drew mcintyre what kind of a match did you have maybe we were expecting the most likely result would be a dq or great khali comes back or something happens or something of the sort that mcintyre doesn't win now so basically the face of the storyline has already won what are you waiting for now jinder mal loses clean clean why did you make him return for that and why do we need it on a pay per view forget the back story and all why do we need it this on a pay per view you could have done it on a random raw no it is pay per view quality but when it's done with good story not with chair shots 32 chair shots to shanti and that guy is so big and he doesn't even have a character he looks like a lost uh, jadu on uh, raw indian guys understand the reference english guys just search it bro he uh, fears no one shanky he can fight off police officers he can fight off drew mcintyre as well i hope so he raised a police officer like this yeah and But when I drew think... mcintyre comes I don't know man I think the feud is continuing and I I think for some reason they're going to do it in a Punjabi prison match Yeah extreme rules you need a stipulation Jinder is Indo Canadian what's going to happen <laughs> it's going to be the Punjabi prison I hope it's ending at extreme rules I don't uh, uh, hope they're stretching it to Saudi and you forgot about that uh, there was also involvement of angela the sword it's named angela don't are you watching you monday night raw weekly it's named angela if i'm not wrong huh i am watching raw how much are you reviewing it are you watching it two to three times really they are kind of uh, they have given the sword a name i guess and that the name belongs to drew mcintyre's mother what is your logic fan really you keep checking out i no no i'm not i'm not asking you for your logic i'm asking wwe for the logic so whatever happens in the storyline i'm not interested right now because you are not pandering to the indian people with jinder mahal come on we don't like jinder okay just you tried your best give us great khali give us a limping khali i will work with that we don't want jinder mal you you have the insta real king in great khali just have him he could have, his songs could have been the sponsor for summer slam at the joe scardi b thank you wwe up and which <laughs> is you know and which is so, by the way let me add let me add which is not pg c the problem is every single cardi b song has a phenomenal beat the beat you can vibe to it but the problem is you have to remove so many words that the song doesn't even sound like the original one you have so many cuss words in the song so many words that cannot be used 
you have to change it again and again so bad choice great kali is there use him bro mainstream music doesn't work with wrestling that's Thomas a fact like theme songs are good bro they are generally good but tonight they suck but enough of cardi b man enough of cardi b uh, let's talk about uh, this raw women's championship match with uh, nikki ash she is the champion here she is facing almost a superhero nikki ash say the full form then use the short form as well can i call her nikki ash no <laughs> I want to call her Nikki Ash. Why would should I say? Yeah, that's A-S-H? quick. That's quick, right? Uh, anyways, man, she was facing Charlotte Flair and Rhea Ripley. This fee, uh, feud is you could compare it to the McIntyre and Mahal feud. Like nobody cared, but they also cared at the same time for some weird reason because Nikki Ash. People are into it and not into it at the same time. If I'm not wrong. Yeah, she is done. She is buried. Don't you realize? Her dream is done. So money in the bank, title match, title win, over. So I am waiting for Nikki Cross to return now because how long are you going to stretch this? Are they going to give her a second title run? I just don't know. I was so wrong. Like I was thinking, you can't just predict Charlotte Flair for every title match she's in. I was so damn wrong. <laughs> like you, you, if you are doing a prediction game with your friend. Every title match Charlotte Flair is in, in which she's the challenger. Please pick her; she will win. Death, Texas, and Charlotte Flair. Uh, Charlotte Flair wins a championship. That's the rule, bro. Absolutely. But uh, about this match, this match, you could say it was really good. And like I said uh, on this uh, Money in the Bank review, do you remember when I said a motivated Charlotte Flair is the best Charlotte Flair? We all saw the same yeah, Charlotte Flair here. Yeah. So when Charlotte Flair fights in the ring, you know why she deserves those ten plus championships. She is extremely good in the ring. Over pushed, yes, I agree. But she is very good in the ring, and uh, this was, you know, the point where the pay per view picked up. It was going up and down, up and down till now. But this is where it went on an absolute up. The theme song. So it went on an absolute up and had a bit of a problem towards the end of the WWE Championship match. But this is where it picked up and good, good match this one. So uh, we see a lot of you know uh, the theme of this match was you know one individual was going for submission and the other was uh, other competitor used to break it up. You know typical triple threat rules. So there was one spot from Charlotte Flair where uh, she was originally was supposed to do a moon sword. But this time she decided to do a corkscrew, which looked insane. Kind of, you know, landed on the uh, barricade, area, like. And uh, there was another spot before this where Rhea Ripley got tossed outside the ring, and she landed on her legs. Bro, I want to say that she needs to stop doing that spot because last time she did it, she almost broke her legs. Oh, the one where she was walking with the crutch. Um, no, no, I'm I'm talking about that spot. <laughs> I'm talking about that spot, the back body okay. dropped uh, yeah. spot and landing on the apron, which is which is not a safe thing to do. But yeah, yeah, the corkscrew that she did was insane. I was expecting a moonsault, and Charlotte Flair moonsaults generally don't hit because she directly lands on her feet and she doesn't. She tries to hit her opponents like that, swinging her arms to the side. But good choice for the move right now, and Nikki's head. Just smashed itself into the barricade like this. Very dangerous spot, but well planned. Did injure anyone? And Rhea Ripley just tried to squat down when she went over the top rope. But don't do that next time because after you landed, you could have called it some magic and said, "Oh my God, see, I'm standing on my feet." But after landing, you fall down and you say that you're hurt. That can't happen. She waited for two seconds and then fell down. So bad choice for that. But yeah, very good match. Had very good spots. And the way it ended was also good. Like uh, final part was uh, Nikki Ash being locked in the figure eight. And Ash, Ash, God damn it! Did I say Nikki Ash? Yes, you did. Okay, so Nikki Ash was locked in the figure eight. Rhea Ripley is out of this equation. Ash taps out. We got new Raw Women's Champion Charlotte Flair. 
and i wouldn't have mind if we see becky lynch here but the damage was done with bianca vela early on so there you go charlotte player is close to beating the record of her dad so yeah yeah she is 13 time women's champion now she was 14 but then they cut down her to nxt championship range so back to 12 now she's 13 wait so, they got they cut off the two nxt title reigns yeah they cut off two nxt title reigns because that was the phase where wins was uh, doing everything anti nxt he ruined cross on his debut he uh, removed two title reigns from charlotte's uh, numbers so it went from 14 to 12 now she's a 13 time women's champion actually 15 it's a big accomplishment if you count the titles it's 15 but they've not counted it so let's see where it goes but charlotte holding the title is absolutely not a problem you know over pushed and all of that but when she's in the title picture she just looks you know right because i don't want to see charlotte player without a title she looks good with a title and when she's the champion there's more legitimacy in the storylines so happy that she's champion and very excited to see where this goes as well i don't know should i be excited or not or where this whole thing goes because now who else do i have you on that raw roster ria nikki who else see the obvious option if, if i was actually booking wwe i would seriously go for charlotte versus alexa bliss at extreme rules it is alexa's hometown charlotte beating alexa in her hometown would give her even more heat if you want a title change then it would be insane because it's her hometown everything is just going right so i think the match they should book is alexa bliss versus charlotte but i'm too scared wwe won't i And but if not if not you don't have a new challenger please don't give me charlotte versus nikki or charlotte versus rhea or anything like that i don't want to watch any more of that And by the way, let's get rid of that gimmick with Alexa Bliss, shall we? Yeah, man. Like till the Fiend was there, we had that suspicion that the Fiend would come back and have uh, Alexa steal her gimmick and all of that stuff. But now that the Fiend is gone, it's even more pointless. So yeah, just screw the gimmick. But they have to, you know, book the gimmick out of the storyline. So I don't know how they'll do that. But you know if even if nikki would have retained today i would have loved to see them battle nikki and uh, alexa at extreme rules because they have that history it would have been great see so many matches can be booked but wwe won't do that maybe do drop i'm sorry piper nevin could be uh, coming back into the title picture that would be insane because she is a good athlete so let's see where this goes but enough of the sports entertainment chitman let's talk about professional wrestling like punk said on rampage let's talk about peace. edge inner peace let's talk about edge versus rollins i according to me the build to this was way better than cena versus reigns for some reason because i'll yeah. we'll talk about uh, when we get to cena versus reigns but their build was good you had some good storytelling and yeah the match delivered massively man this match was great match of the night what do you have to say about edge versus rollins how can you not notice the small things first of all rollins is gear beautiful edge is entrance insane he came out with the brood entrance he had a smoke and fire he came out with the glasses and then midway during his pyro time he moved moved to rated as superstar edge brilliant stuff brilliant stuff and talking about the booking they made it really nice edge light basically it is true because rollins has had a very similar career path to edge and they probably rollins has done more but very good way of booking it the brute dark side we didn't nobody expected him to make a brute entrance we saw the dark side of edge on smackdown for a bit uh, pouring that black liquid that alexa uses uh, edge asked for it and then poured it on seth rollins so we expected that but not on summer slam so brilliant way but the match and you know till now for 2021 i have 20 match of their contenders i don't know how but in 8 uh, months i have 20 match of their contenders this becomes the 21st so it's going to be a very good year because it was an insane match please also note in your moty list that this was edge's best match since coming back best singles match since coming back and this is seth rollins best singles match i don't know since last year or so you got this is our match but i think this overshadowed that also 
Absolutely. Obviously, this is Aaron Rollins match was great, but this this was like ten uh, uh, x of that match. Like this was absolute magic in the ring. Like I was talking to my dad about this match. He doesn't watch a lot of WWE right now, but he knows obviously everyone. So I was talking to him and I said, Edge versus Rollins. It was like two magicians in the ring. They're just absolute greats of professional wrestling. And I love the fact that you know people forgot about it. The feud was good, but the fact that when Edge returned, we had all this this checklist of dream matches. This was one of them, and I didn't even hear one person saying, "Oh, it's a dream match." It felt like a normal feud, but when you saw the match, you realized who the hell these two people are. So yeah, best singles match for Edge since his return. The Backlash match was really good, man. The greatest wrestling match was good, and yeah, triple threat. But you then said singles match, so I got your point. And yeah, Rollins has also not had such a brilliant match in a long time. So really, really happy. And let's see where this goes. I think the last uh, good match Rollins had was the same pay per view last year against Dominic. That match was really, really good. Mm, you could say that, but I have been hating Seth, hating Seth Rollins since 2019 because for a lot of reasons. But I have to say, man, he is a really good professional wrestler. Yeah, absolutely. In ring, he doesn't. Ma- nobody matches to Seth Rollins right now because. Character work aside, he's really, really good in the ring. And since 2019, it was kind of forced heel turn because people just didn't like him. Uh, you know, it was not like Roman Reigns' storyline from 2014 to 18. At least at that time, the kids liked Roman Reigns. You could hear the little girls and little boys cheering for him. But Rollins, nobody liked him. People started hating him for uh, having that feeling storyline. So yeah, forced heel turn. But where it's le- I don't see him as a heel right now because. It's weird. He is not doing heelish things, and so, you don't, and you don't even need to turn him baby face again because he is not yet recovered from the whole incident in 2019. Yeah, absolutely. You can't like you can't turn him face right now. But since the crowds are there, you can maybe. But where? Because Roman Reigns is a heel. If Rollins comes into that storyline, he could be a baby face. So let's see where this goes. Character work is needed, but not right now. It can take time. But the match itself. I think there's going to be a second or third part because we're going to Saudi in October. Saudi requires legends. Edge is going to be there, so I think uh, it's going to be a 50-50 booking pay per view next month on uh, Extreme Rules. They'll have a stipulation match. Rollins will win it, and then uh, the end happens at Saudi Arabia. But about the match, man, the story was involving Edge's bad neck, and Rollins was constantly, you know, finding ways to target it, you know. uh bashing it, bashing it against the steps you know uh, hitting a neck breaker around, around the ropes and he was trying a lot to you know connect with the stomp uh, correct me did he at least once connect with the curb stomp no so i think they did a fine job protecting the curb stomp here so edge by the way was hitting all of his big moves like he was hitting the old school moves like the execution he locked in a submission they called it the educator if i'm not wrong so there he yeah. goes pulling off everything here and he also hit the spear but seth rollins kicked out so both men won are... by submission we didn't expect that yeah like uh, someone someone pointed out like edge uh, exhausted everything so he had to go to something else so there mm-hmm. you go he had so he locked in a sleeper or a cross face And made Seth Rollins tap to uh, tap out, and there you go. Really good match, best match of the night. And yeah, man, I won't mind if they are going in the rematch route. Hmm. Absolutely. As I said, it's going to be fifty-fifty booking, so it's going for the next two pay per views for sure. If not, then people are also speculating Edge versus Cena for some pay per view. But Cena is uh, obviously determined not to go to Saudi because of the. uh jamal kashogi case the journalist killing case so he is determined not to go to saudi respect to cena for that so he won't go to saudi let's see where edge and cena happens most probably people are saying it could happen in dallas next year at mania hey that that's a perfect place to do edge versus cena give us a random yeah. match and that's it yeah you don't need a feud and it's edge cena like people will be excited it's legend versus legend so yeah but uh, let's say by the way when is the draft the draft i uh, the confirmed dates uh, are august 31st it's on smackdown and then the next episode of raw 
September fourth, September third. Don't know. It should be basically a re a refresh or restart, but usually when they do it, it lasts last lasts for only two three weeks, and we it doesn't actually make a difference. Yeah, wild card rule, brand to brand invitational, all of that starts. So I'm hoping I'm hoping that Adam Pierce and Sonia Deville are two separate general managers. That could have that could make it really really good for the draft that they actually pick someone instead of Stephanie coming out and announcing things. So. Let's see where the draft heads. But uh, Cena is rumored for the not rumored, confirmed for the September 13th episode of Raw in Boston. So he's going there, but he's a free agent right now. So maybe they're drafting him to Raw for that one episode. Let's see where it goes. Because he said at Money in the Bank, this is not a one-off. So what does that mean? Because he lost clean. So let's see where this leads. Let's talk about the WWE Championship match. I'm talking about Goldberg versus Bobby Lashley. Did you care? Man, you're talking to the wrong person because I love Goldberg. But uh, what about the match? Yeah, I I'm you know mixed feelings. But let's start with the first point because the people were like Goldberg is a one minute guy, and I was extremely happy. That he gave a big match. He gave a long match with prop. When he gave a headlock, I was like, "What? Goldberg and a headlock?" So when that happened, I was like, "Okay, they're giving us a match." So headlock and all of that stuff happened. Interesting match had perfect moments. Happy that Goldberg didn't go for the jackhammer because Lashley is heavy. He didn't even hit a spear. So every they actually gave us a match, and he almost, almost. This is the bad part where he uh, almost broke Lashley's neck when he threw him off the top rope. So yeah, that's one bad thing that happened. But overall, I think it's a good way to end. The match didn't end really well because um, whatever happened. So let's talk about the ending. But yeah, I did care a bit, but the, they surprised me with a long match. Yeah, that part was surprising, but this match sucked. Like <laughs> you, you know, Goldberg. Great description. <laughs> You know Goldberg's battery died after that shoulder tackle. Yeah, Goldberg flew in the air. I was like, whoa! And uh, you could have done a five-minute squash match or typical Goldberg match, but why are we having a wrestling match? And Bobby Lashley is no, you know, best wrestler in the world here. Like that, that guy, you know, barely sells at this point. So why are we having a long match? and they are having this long match and both men are almost botching at least bobby lashley looked really good here goldberg is botching everything at this point uh, so we have a story of uh, lashley targeting goldberg's knee and it got to a point that goldberg was not able to even continue the match and i thought was this a, is this a shoot or is this part of the match and they call for a disqualification some it's not a disqualification say what do you call, call it off. yeah so as a result of goldberg not continuing uh, lashley wins still wwe champion what a complete waste of everyone's time but they did a thing and it's more fuel to the fire here like he's come continuing the assault with a steel chair you know uh, beating up goldberg and his bad knee by the way the only thing entertaining about this match was the people were shitting on goldberg the vegas crowd was full pro bobby lashley i enjoyed that so he's doing that you know uh, destroying goldberg at this point then we saw someone coming out and it was goldberg's son cage he jumps on lashley but lashley picks him up and locks him in the hurt lock crowd goes wild i loved that as well so nobody gives a shit about goldberg you, you you love child abuse really nice it, it, it's wrestling man it's wrestling come on <clears throat> yeah but that's that man they are kind of continuing this whole thing with lashley and goldberg i don't care i i'll give it short and sweet three match saudi arabia wwe championship or Catch the Goldbergs versus MVP and Bobby Lashley. Two options. If the title match happens, Goldberg is winning. 
sorry for uh, you know the uh, spoiler here but goldberg is probably winning the wwe championship and i'm shocked because we had proper news that goldberg is a two match contract guy he has a two match contract since sorry what i think uh, technically he has one more match i guess so they've negotiated i think uh, i don't know but since 2019 it's been that way 2019 i think he had ziggler and he had another match sometime uh, he had uh, fiend and strowman in 2020 he has mcintyre and lashley in 2021 but if they have a third match for goldberg i think it's negotiation so let's see where it goes but not really excited about it but let's talk about the damn main event because it's insane but before we get to the main event one last thing is like i said i don't care i'm at this point only waiting for big e to jump in cash in and get in the title picture yeah big e i don't think he's going to step in right now i think big e will have to wait because maybe he's entering the wwe title picture maybe he's entering the universal title picture nobody knows where he's going so let's see what happens but let's talk about the main event i know yes. you are most excited for this one and yeah. you could say this was the second best match of the night and yeah. cena looked good man cena looked good here but uh, we are talking about the universal championship match roman reigns versus john cena and what did you think about this build and that one stipulation of uh, if reigns loses he is out of wwe hmm the build i think i'm on the opposite to some of the people people hated the build uh, i think i uh, loki liked it because the first face to face that happened that was actually built that they're going face to face and all of that i felt cena's points were pointless because he said that uh, roman reigns is a complete failure he doesn't know how to carry smackdown dude you're not even watching then since two years and he says he ruined almost ruined seth rollins i don't know how he ran dean and ambrose out of wwe not true so he was basically giving pointless points just for the sake of uh, saying something and if you notice he is good at improvising but since he didn't have any points he just went back to the one two three like five or six times so not a good uh, feud to be honest because it was not the match that people were looking forward to for an instant classic they had as versus rollins for that this was just for the hype it was the mega match of the pay per view so they delivered absolutely the match quality was also good they had the drama of reigns and uh, holding his title up so many roll ups for cena to just show one two three to reigns all of that happened and very good match and happy that he was winning clean and basically you uh, like you described the build i would say they became kind of lazy because it's cena and reigns people won't care about the build it's they are two big stars so why even bother mm. you know putting the effort yeah because 2017 had everything they wanted this was basically to prove that roman reigns has improved on the mic which is true but they had lost everything in 2017 and the reason they didn't even mention the 2017 match even once is because they wanted people to feel in their hearts that this is the first time ever they didn't even mention that roman reigns the bad roman reigns that cena says he was actually beat him so they didn't even uh, acknowledge that fact so yeah let's talk about the match and the end because someone came but uh, yeah man uh, roman reigns cena and actually surprised that cena actually looked good because the last time he was as a part timer he was kind of sloppy but he was on point here yeah Cena doesn't know how to connect punches. First of all, he does this sideways uh, thing which doesn't look like a punch. So he looked really good in this match. Nice hairstyle. Too much effort on the Titan drawn and the T-shirt that it's going to be the 17th world title. And let's just see where this goes because Cena. Uh, sorry, what? Small part of me actually wouldn't have mind Cena getting the title, but at the end, uh, as as you saw the result. it was the best decision they could go with and a big part of me would have been angry if cena would have won so no, the absolute right decision i think cena didn't uh, you know i wouldn't say deserve didn't need to win the universal championship today 
he can win it in the future when Roman Reigns is not champion. So yeah, happy with the result and happy that it wasn't a false finish or anything. He beat him clean. Also says that the spear is a good move because it took only one. So yeah, Edge Rollins kicked out of your spear. See, Cena lost in one. So who's the better spear guy? But uh, the uh, difference between this and the Rollins and Edge match was we at least in their case we had a story with the neck and all. But here. they were actually exchanging big moves but you could describe this as a classic wwe style match a main event style match exactly this wasn't a classic match that people wanted to see for the wrestling part you see that they were just pandering to the crowd cena went to the crowd 1 2 3 reigns was just showing off as the big heel in front of the crowd they wanted to use the crowd effect right now and they used it well because it was just about pandering the crowd it was the hype match so yeah really good and reigns even went on the stairs to hold the universal title high in between the match so good spots as well too many attitude adjustments but yeah cena looked good after so many years and reigns is also good bro he it almost not one not two but three attitude adjustments one in the flat in the ring one in while see uh, i think reigns was going for a big move uh, reigns got caught and he was uh, aed on the announcer table and then a super a so all three years couldn't put down roman reigns here and i loved this spot where you know cena was going for his big five big moves here and one of those was you know the five knuckle shuffle and the you can see me but when he was doing that roman reigns caught him in the guillotine lock which looked great and uh, which, uh, that didn't put down cena as well so as we get to the end Uh, we see Reigns hitting a bunch of Superman punches and finally hit a big spear, and that was it for John Cena. Pretty good match, and yeah, we Reigns. You could uh, this. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He beat a, a legend like Cena, so he gets in that hit list of you know big guys that he has taken down so far. So that was the whole purpose of this whole Cena versus Reigns. Am I right? Yeah, that Roman Reigns can beat a big uh, Hall, future Hall of Famer like John Cena. So that was the entire point. Happy with the result. Happy with what happened. Happy that Cena accepted a clean finish, and he put over Reigns more than he already is. So can we please, can we please talk about what happened next? Yeah, we are. But uh, I realized the word I was looking for is he was out here to elevate Roman Reigns as Universal Champ. Yeah, that's the word I was. Put him over. Put him over. But uh, you wanted to talk about this, the post-match stuff. I thought this was it. We are done with SummerSlam. I was ready to, you know, just relax. But then we hit the the Brock Lesnar <laughs> music. Crowd goes wild, and we see a Brock Lesnar with a ponytail, with a tank top, and jeans. Bro, I was a big fan of this whole Brock Lesnar look. Then I was, you know. For a fan of this whole Summer Slam show, like Lesnar is super over here with the crowd, and he actually went face to face with Roman Reigns, and I loved it when he was making his way to the ring. Paul Heyman is panicking, bro. Exactly, Paul Heyman's acting was really, really good at this time. Extremely happy that Brock Lesnar is back, dude. Have you seen his look right now? He looks like he's gained sixty to seventy pounds of muscle. when he did the this move in front of the crowd you could see this part of his body he was this big like he has grown so much and his ponytail his tank top his jeans boots he looked like a cowboy insane look he was massive like i was like is this brock lesnar because he looked like a double of brock lesnar he was really big and bad mike if you couldn't believe it because when lesnar was in front of him he was like i thought i was big i'm like no you're a midget in front of him <laughs> But yeah, man, Lesnar is back with a new look. Goes face to face with Reigns, kind of. And you know, Paul Heyman, you know, he was slowly backing off Roman Reigns, and the both men walk off. So even commentators, you know, talking about that yeah, he's the you know special counsel for the tribal chief Reigns. But an advocate for Lesnar. Yeah. So that's the whole story, man. Now we have to wait and see where this dynamic goes. Where. Paul Heyman is, uh, you know, allegiance lies. Is he with 
Lesnar, is he with Reigns? It's a it's a beautiful dynamic they've created. See, uh, Reigns versus Lesnar was a match nobody wanted to watch. Now Reigns versus Lesnar is the match everyone wants to watch. There are a couple of reasons for it. Lesnar is the face now. Reigns is the heel now. Reigns has the title, which is not the dynamic generally. It's Lesnar, uh, who is the champion. Reigns is going after him. You have the Heyman effect because he's with both of them. So it's going to be insane how the story pans out. And it's going to be obviously going to be in Saudi Arabia. But if they do it at Extreme Rules, I'll be shocked and happy to see it. So Lesnar and Reigns, just I hope they... Can you imagine how Lesnar would look in his regular shorts with a ponytail? He would look stupid. I hope they change his gear a bit as well. Tank top and shorts to Lesnar would look ripped. I don't know, man. The look so far looks sick. And kind of interested in this program because yeah. Reigns has been doing good. Now that the Cena mm-hmm. thing... I think the Cena thing was kind of a dip for him. To be honest. For Reigns? Yes. I mean, just look at the people he's beating right now. Like Daniel Bryan, Edge, John Cena, now Brock Lesnar in a feud. It's like you're just picking one after the other after the other. It's like this is probably one of the best championship reigns in a decade or two. Probably because it's been insanely booked, beautifully booked. So really excited to see where this program goes. And, you know, the last four matches just saved the pay-per-view, as I said. Yeah, it went from a shit show to a decent enough paper. Yeah. So that was SummerSlam. We'll have to wait and see where this uh, whole thing leads regarding the Lester and Rain situation. But did you read the spoilers or, you know, the post show, you know, thing when the cameras, you know, went down? Lesnar was beating up Cena. And when I read that headline for the first time, I started dying. Man. Like, why? <laughs> He was like, there's no reason. Lesnar versus Cena is not happening. Or is it? Lesnar versus Cena at Extreme Rules. Nine years in the making. Extreme Rules 2012, they faced off. Will both men work a D-level paper? You? I don't know. Because if they do, they, it could be a number one contenders match. Dude, can you imagine Cena versus Lesnar versus Reigns? It would be like insane. In, I don't know. At this point, need a singles feud. If Cena is done, yeah, so don't true. involve him with Reigns again. It's not. Yeah, it is. A, it will not make sense. Mm. Let's. I think the hard thing is, you know, uh, you could squeeze out everything you need from this whole Lesnar, Heyman, and Reigns deal. That's the yeah, selling point here. Cena. Yeah, absolutely, a singles feud is what we need. I don't know. Cena is done with WWE as of now. He said it's not a one-off. I don't know what that uh, that means. He, we're still left with a Balor Cena thing. We've not had Finn Balor versus John Cena. Finn Balor is pissed off with John Cena for not having that title match. Have an amazing Cena versus Balor match next month. And put over Balor? Yeah. Does, he, does Balor need that rub? See, you guys were unhappy that Balor is smiling on his first night on SmackDown. That's gone. He's officially the prince. Put over Balor, leave SmackDown. Balor is a credible challenger for the Universal title. Mm, I wouldn't mind that. I think yeah. it, it will actually be do some favors for Balor. Yes, simple. Reigns beat Cena. Balor says, see, I can also beat Cena. Have that feud. Balor would be elevated a bit. I can see that happening at the MSG show. Okay, yeah, that could happen. But that was... We were, we were talking about SummerSlam. Decent enough SummerSlam. Thank God, you know, the last three matches and segments saved the show. But, uh, Spandan, before we leave, hey, uh, by the way, what do you give the, uh, this show a rating? I'll give it an 8. I'll give it a 7. Fair enough? Yeah. But, uh, before we leave, where can these guys find you? Okay, so you guys can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at GarbetVC. I have blogs, I have a podcast, you can watch me in amazing videos, and there's going to be a lot of content coming in the future, so do that, subscribe to the channel as well. And you can find Slam Up Wrestling on Twitter at Slam Up Debut, Instagram at Slam Up Wrestling. You can catch this review on Anchor and Spotify as well. 
this was the summer slam review and we'll see you guys at takeover